Hey, shalom, shalom. First off, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahawashai, Bahashim Rachah Kodash. Double line into the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who are on the truth of the gospel of Yahweh Shai from through the Holy Spirit. Honor, salutations, and blessings to the men that are preaching the gospel of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahawashai, in all sincerity, diligence, and truth. And peace, grace, and blessings be upon the house of David, which is the elect. Um, just want to touch on this article um, coming from Russia today. Its uh, title says, EU Risks Wild West Scenario Energy Watchdog. All right, it says that IEA head Faith Biro warns that member states could abandon solidarity to secure their own gas supplies. All right, and, um, you know, as I was uh, reading this article, it was just, um, you know, making me uh, think in the spirit about what the words of Yahweh Shai, where he spoke in the book of uh, Mark, the uh, third chapter, where it speaks of uh, Satan house being divided. Okay, uh, let me see. So like, yeah. where is it? All right, because here it is that the the EU, all right, which the EU, the the name um, means European Union. So there was a there was a, and that European Union started um, with uh, uh, the Treaty of Rome, which I have that up up and I will pull it up. But let me read this first. Let me not get too ahead of myself. This is the Book of Mark. Chapter three, verse uh, 23, it says, um, and he said, and he called and said unto them and said unto them. So like, and he, and he called them unto him and said unto them in parables, how can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. Okay, so we know that Esau Edom, uh, his his kingdom, all right, his 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 energy is after, uh, or his dealings, his workings is after the energy of Satan. All right, he is uh, 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 the the physical counterpart to the spiritual demon Satan because he took he took that deal. That Satan tried to give to Yahweh Shai when we read about in Matthew, the uh, fourth chapter. Okay, uh, Matthew four, verse um, where is it? Matthew four, verse um, eight. It says, "And again, uh, the devil taking taking him up into an high, exceedingly high mountain, and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them." Actually, I like to get this in. I believe it's in the book of uh, Luke. Let's see, because uh, uh, you know, I like how it's written in Luke. But let's read it here in the book of Luke, chapter four, verse five. It says, "And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, showeth unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time." All right, so all of the the, the kingdoms, the rulerships, which we know, pursuant to Job nine verse twenty four, that the earth is in the hand of uh, is given in the hand of the wicked. All right. So we know that right now that uh, the kingdoms are the dominion of the of the uh, earth right now is in the hand of Esau. And how did that happen? All right. When in, in this right here, <laughs> the devil, Satan. All right. Because this is speaking about the spiritual demon, um, uh, Satan, all right, the spiritual devil, Satan, which the word devil means deceiver. It says, verse six, and the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee. And the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. You see, so Satan for for a particular moment was given the dominions of of a, over the kingdoms of the world. All right, let's see this in NLT, and I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them. The devil said, because they are mine to give to anyone I please. You see that. Uh, uh, NIV, and he said unto him, I will give you all the authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. But there is a condition that Satan had in order to give the kingdoms, or give the glory, or the splendor of the earth to at this present time. And what did he, and, and that condition is what is written in verse 7. It says, And if thou Therefore, wilt worship me, all shall be thine. 
All right, but we know that Yahweh Shai rebuked Satan. Okay, and Yahweh Shai said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy power, and him alone shall thy serve. But see, Esau, he, <laughs> because he uh, uh, is the son of perdition, the man of sin, right? When 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 Satan came to Esau with this deal, what Satan took that deal. Satan uh, uh, worshipped uh, Absalakia. Esau took that deal and worshipped Satan. And that's why we say, and that's how we know that the uh, the, the these Edomites are satanic. They're, they are the uh they are in the spirit of anti Messiah. Okay? And that's why it's also written in the book of Ephesians, chapter six. What? Um, verse 12. For we wrestle not against uh, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. All right. So the, the ones who are on high in this world, right, which we know are to be of the house of Esau from specifically from the tribe of Amalek is uh, Amalek is the first of the nations pursuant to. Um, no, um, Exodus, the 24th chapter. All right. Amalek is the first of the nations, but his latter end is, shall, is that he shall perish forever. But him being the first of the nations, he's gotten, um, he had the dominion in the earth right now, but the triumphing of the wicked is but for a moment. And that's go, going back into this article. We're seeing now the end of the uh, rulership of Esau under the power of Satan. Okay. Because what the earth, the earth uh, um, was created for the elect's sake. It was created for, first and foremost, Shehawashai and the elect to rule in righteousness under the order and guidance and authority of the Most High. All right. But because we fell and because, you know, uh, the, and the Lord had the heathenistic, you know, rulers, rulers rule the earth with the last heathen being the basis of man, being the most wicked, Esau, Eden ruling. But that that had that was only temporary, all right. So now we're now we're in the midst of seeing the end of a satanic rulership, and that's and this is what this article is going into. So it says the worsening energy crisis may lead to EU nations casting aside solidarity for their own energy security. The head of the international energy agency, Faith Biro, told the uh, told the Financial Times. In an interview with the outlet, Barrow said he was afraid that a Wild West scenario is in the making among countries in the bloc in which they might limit energy exports to their neighbors in order to protect their own domestic supplies. Right. So they're moving away from working together. And now these European uh, um, um, nations are now working by themselves. They're not. They're not. And in, 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 they're not cohesive anymore. All right. They're not all working in tandem, and that's all because ultimately, the Lord is um, fulfilling prophecies that were written. Satan house, you know, is being divided. The 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 uh, prophecy of the ten toes, which we did a, a video on it the other day. Okay, of of it being mixed, part miry, part iron, and part miry clay. Right. And the miry clay and the, and the iron, it wouldn't be able to um, th those those things can't mesh. They can't mix. So reading on, it says the implications will be very bad for energy, very bad for the economy, but extremely bad politically. If Europe fails to test, fails this test in energy, it can go beyond energy implications. Byro was cited as saying he added that the EU faces two scenarios. And the future of the bloc depends on whether member states adhere to one of its founding principles, solidarity, right? And you go into that word solidarity, it means what? Um, anonymity, unity, or agreement of feeling and action, all right? Um, so, yeah, basically, that's what it is, a union, a, uni a um, unity or agreement, excuse me. So, it's, it's a unity, but... That is that is that unity is now becoming less and less strong. That bond is 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 becoming is breaking, right? So it says EU and and its members will work in solidarity, supporting each other. And there is another scenario if everybody is for himself, being divided. 
One of the founding values of the EU is solidarity, and abandoning this will negatively will negatively affect the EU's weight across the whole across the world. He said. The EU has been grappling with an energy crisis with natural gas pricing surging 400% at their peak during 2022. <laughs> hey, man, we haven't even hit winter yet. But, but the gas prices have surged 400%. You had the UK just came out. Uh, I think the Bank of England just came out yesterday and, and admitted that they were in a recession. So, you know, uh, um, that's only going to amplify and get worse. And ba- Babylon, the Great America, is definitely you know already in a recession too, right? But the the these um, talking heads are still trying to you know speak speak these smooth words. But a lot of people are not buying it, man. A lot of people don't trust in the government, don't trust in these uh, uh, leaders, and that's and that's only and they keep coming out and coming on TV lying and, and spewing all of this peace peace when there is none. So it says, with Russian supplies dwindling amid sanctions on the countries in Moscow counter sanctions, member states have turned to alternative energy sources, including LNG from the U.S. and Qatar. Brussels has also introduced policies aimed at reducing gas consumption, storing up supplies for this for the winter and sharing among the countries in the bloc. The latter, all right, which is what the sharing among the countries in the bloc will only work if member states establish bilateral pacts to share gas analysis says, uh, excuse me, analyst says. However, not all EU countries have these arrangements. And earlier this month, reports emerged that Belgium, Luxembourg, the Netherlands and Poland have refused to engage in talks on gas sharing deals. So there, so those uh, countries that were named specifically said that they're not even going to engage in 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 talks of sharing gas, all right, with their other neighbors in the EU. But once again, like how this article was saying that solidarity was one of the founding principles of the EU, European Union. Now, when you go to the Treaty of Rome, okay, just for a quick history, because this is how we know. According to prophecy, when you read in the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter, <clears throat> it speaks about what that um, that that first beast, right, whose um, deadly wound was healed, right? That first beast being the ancient Roman Empire. OK, because that was when Esau was at the height of his um, of his rulership before um, uh, the Dark Ages, so-called Dark Ages or, or the medieval times. And that deadly wound being healed was the, you know, the, the ancient pagan Roman Empire uh, being, you know, destroyed. And then, and then, um, excuse me, oh, the ancient Roman Empire being destroyed and then it coming back and during the Renaissance. So when you read here, this says the Treaty of Rome. Now, why do they call it the Treaty of Rome? Because it wasn't just uh, 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 Rome or Italy. That was a part of this, all right. And Roman Italy right now, that they don't play a very big part when it comes to the um, the economy of the beast. Okay, yeah, they still have the Vatican, which is that false prophet, false prophet, where the, the that false religions, you know, that has blinded the, the the whole world, you know, comes out of the Vatican. But on an economic standpoint, um, Rome isn't. Our so-called Italy, our Italy slash the city of Rome, which is which Rome is a, a city in Italy, isn't really a, um, doesn't have one of the biggest economies in in the beast. But they call it the Treaty of Rome because this was what Rome being uh, uh, revived. OK, that deadly wound being healed. So it says it is the it is set up. It is so like it. It set up the European Economic Community, EEC. Bringing together Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands to work together towards integration and economic growth through trade, establishing a common market based on the free market of goods, people, services, and capital. Okay, and the basically the the, the EEC or the Treaty of Rome, the EEC got changed basically to the EU. 
All right, the EEC and the EU is, 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 is synonymous. But once again, this treaty, it did what? It brought together, working together what? Of integration. We go into the word integration. is basically the opposite of, of solidarity, right? It's this combination, the act, the process of integrating. So you, um, you basically combining all of these various different countries um, together through trade, through uh, uh, the marketplace. But now, because of these plagues, right, and because of uh, uh, this whole um, energy crisis that is happening, you got these countries within the EU or the EEC that are now having a, a mind shift of working uh, solo, all right? They're not working together no more. Each country is out for its own benefit, okay? <clears throat> and like I said, that goes into the prophecy of the 10 toes and also shows you that the Lord is bringing, you know, this place uh, uh, to, his, to his demise, all right? Which how wish I said that one of the signs of the end was going to be what? Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Part of that nation versus nation is, is when it comes to uh, trade, the, the economy, trade wars, economic wars. So it says, um, Isaiah chapter nine, verse 19, verse two, and I will set up the Egyptian against the Egyptian and they shall fight everyone against his brother and everyone against his neighbor, city against city and kingdom against kingdom. All right. And that's what you're seeing happening on a micro level and on a macro level, because a lot of people, because a lot of people are, are, are getting in the mindset of a hey, everybody, every shit is hitting the fan everywhere. So we just got to look out for ourselves, all right? Getting that, that mindset of, hey, fuck, fuck these other people. We got to just worry about our own self. And, and I'm speaking about that in a, uh, in, in a national view, okay? Within Esau's kingdom, within his system, there's, breaking, there's, there's parts that are breaking off. And all of that is causing it, is causing this place to get weaker and weaker. Like how they said in um, uh, Planet of the Apes, where he grabbed the two sticks. He had one stick. He said, by yourself, single, easy to be break. But when there's two, it's, it's harder to break. It's stronger together. So what did you see happening right now in these last days? The house of David is waxing stronger. More brothers, sisters is waking up. All right. Remembering ourselves under the banner of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay. While Esau's kingdom is becoming weaker and weaker because everybody is now becoming more in that individualistic state of mind. Not only on a, you know, uh, uh, you know, on a, not only on an individual level, but on a national level. All right. This is the book of Lamentations. <clears throat> Let it load up. Lamentations 4 verse 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, thou that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. All right, the cup of what? The cup of the Most High's indignation, the cup of the Lord's wrath. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. And that's what you're seeing because really, <laughs> they're, they're the ones, you got these elites, all right? They've been trying to manipulate the markets and do all these things because they want to bring more uh, pain upon the people so that they can uh, uh, squeeze, put them in that pressure, in that pressure position to uh, make people fold. And be willing to take that karagma, which a lot of people are going to do that. But while they're doing that, they're also bringing down their own. They're only also causing their own destruction. That's why the scripture says you in the book of. Um, let me see if I can remember a little willing. Isaiah, I mean, Isaiah, Psalms 141. Let's see. Yeah. Psalms 141, verse 19, keep me, Salaki, verse 9, keep me from the snares which they have laid for me and the gins of the workers of iniquity. Yeah, because what are the snares? That ultimate snare is that is that karagma, okay? And that's what Esau is doing. That's why Esau uh, uh, is doing all this, right? It's bringing all this pressure, this inflation, hyperinflation, uh, uh, you know, causing certain weather extremities, Um causing breaks, you know, in the stock markets, except all these things, you know, uh, 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 
hiring the the uh, price of rent, hiring the price of food, gas, or uh, uh, you know, energy, so that people can be pressured, can people can be pushed to a corner and and or, and look for a solution that ESO is going to give them. Because because if you're not spiritually minded, if you don't have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, the only thing that your only solution you're really going to see is the one that Esau gives. Okay? And the people who get deceived by that, they're going to be destroyed. Them going down to Egypt for help is going to be to their shame and confusion. So those are the snares, those are the gins of the workers of iniquity that they're laying out. Verse 10, let the wicked fall into the into their own nets whilst that I withal escape. And that's what's going to happen because this net, all right, this trap that Esau is setting up is ultimately going to call, is going to bring the, the destruction of his kingdom is going to bring in the the the, the World War Three nation versus nation. All right. Uh, allies that were, you know, nations that were allied with one another um, being at odds against each other. The beast hating the whore. You see, so, uh, Psalm seven, verse um, 15 says he made a pit and digged it and and is fallen into the ditch which he hath made. He is his mischief shall return upon his own head and his violent dealings shall come down upon his own pate. OK, and that's why it tells you that in the book of Second Ezra, the 16th chapter, that the powers are going to stand in fear because things are going to unravel completely out of their control and is going to cause uh, um, situations that they did not account for, that they don't have control over. Because right now they still think that they have control over what's going on, but it's going to find they're going to find out that that they were never in control. That was Yahweh Bashim Shai that was doing this, and ultimately he was going he was doing this to do what? To bring in uh, the destruction of Esau and then bring in the rest the restoration of Israel. So going back to Lamentations 4, verse 22, the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. And how do we know that? All right. Because once again, we have waken up. We have remembered ourselves. We are repentive, truly repentive, calling upon the name of Yahweh and the name of his son, Yahweh Shai. All right. The prophecies being fulfilled, the wicked being revealed. Right. So the punishment of our iniquity is accomplished. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. He will no more carry thee away into captivity because this is it. This is the last time we are going to be in this poor, destitute uh, uh, state, all right? Being in the bottom, being being the 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 uh, tails and not the heads. All of the curses that are written. This is the list. Is we're at the end of the of the curses forever on Israel, and when we're going to get the blessings, which the scripture tells you, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, that there should that there won't even be room enough for us to receive it. All right. So we as being a hopeful elect that have this gospel, this good news, we are in coming into some very, very uh, beautiful things, man. OK, but of course, we got to you know finish this course. We got to endure to the end because it's going to be this one last push that this devil is going to do that. Our temptation, the Jacob's trouble, all right, that straight gate that we got to walk through. But understand that if you endure that, the uh, uh, the reward OK, or the suffering of the straight walk can't be compared to the glory of the reward that we're going to receive. All right. It says, and he will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. OK, and all of these treaties, right, all of these backhanded deals, these secret councils. OK, uh, uh, seeing how to destroy, uh, keep blinded. The, the children of the most high, all right, uh, pushing out this evil and wicked vibration upon the earth. All of those things are going to be discovered, man. You see, so um, I ended there. I just want to bring this out, Lord willing. This was edifying unto the elect, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. So next time, Shalom.